play. You will remove your helmet and tell me your name. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the North, general of the Felix Legions, loyal servant to the true emperor Marcus Aurelius, father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance. In this life or the next. Hello, good people of Open Art. As you saw in that intro, yes, that was my face on Maximus from the movie Gladiator. But today we're going to take a look at Open Art Motion Sync. And similar to Runway Act 2, this model can use a video to generate motion. With that being said, this model has a few advantages over Act 2. As you saw, it can do face swapping. Mind you, we still need to optimize for that. I'll get into that later on. One of the main things is being able to capture full body motion, whereas with Act 2, you're limited to half body. And lastly, you can recreate the whole scene just by using one image. To get started, we want to hop over to the video tab at the top of the menu and select motion sync. You'll find motion sync on the left panel and you can collapse that once you're in this mode. And at the very top is where you can select either Open Art Motion Sync or Runway Act 2. And if you're new to Open Art, I encourage you to watch the video on Act 2 as well because it's basically the same concept, just a different model. And the way this works is very simple. The first section here where it says who will be moving, this is where we're going to select our source image. In my case, I'm just going to click it. You can upload it directly from your own hard drive. I'm going to select history and choose something. And then just below, we're going to import the video that we're going to use as our source video. If you click on select video, you can either upload it or grab it from your history, or you can record a video directly on open art. When I click on this, we'll get this pop-up window and you simply just have to click on the record button. I'm just going to do something kind of weird and foolish and we're going to go ahead and stop that and then click on confirm. Going to upload it. You'll see that it's going to process. It's about seven seconds. And before you do anything else, you want to decide if you want the whole scene to be replaced. You can do body only where it's going to keep the background of the video source but change the body, or you can even do face only, which in theory is face swapping. As I alluded to earlier, currently the model's not optimized the way we want. So what happens now, it takes just the face and adopts it to the head of the source video. And just below we have our resolution 720, in 1080p. Now there is a box here to put in a prompt. If you want the results to be exactly like the video, I encourage you not to put anything in the prompt box. But if you want to slightly change the scene, you can go ahead, put a prompt in there, and it'll do its best to adopt to that prompt. Here's some source footage of what I'm going to use for some full body motion and selected full scene. As you see, it mimics the resource video to the T and it's replaced the background, the guy's clothing, everything associated with the image. Here's another piece of footage that I use for this example. I want you to pay attention to the background and the character and what he's wearing. This time I selected body only. And if you look at the generated video, you'll notice the background is still the same, but we've replaced the main character with the person in my image. I did want to point out in terms of the face swapping, as again, I mentioned earlier, although I can see my likeness, it does look a bit off. And the reason being, as I said, it really just takes the face and puts it on the face of your source video instead of taking my whole head and putting it onto the source. So we are working on improving that. Just know that if you want to use a certain piece of footage, make sure that the subject's head looks similar to yours. Otherwise, it's going to look a little weird. You might be wondering, how does it compare to Act 2? But what I'm going to do is show you the clips that I use from Act 2. And I regenerated similar clips using Open Art Motion Sync. Now, in all fairness, I only did the half body ones. Let's take a look at the side by side comparisons. On one hand, I can be an alien from another planet, or I can be the strongest man on Earth. <laughs> or how about a cute and adorable Pixar robot 
with all this personality. But the truth is, I'm actually Superman. <laughs> that sounds so stupid. <laughs> now let's talk about some of the current limitations. I found that if you record either directly on OpenR, record yourself on a camera, cell phone, and then upload it, or you use good quality stock video for the motion, your output is going to be very good. For whatever reason, screen recordings at the moment don't work too well. I had to do sort of a workaround to get that intro that you saw earlier. Let me play this clip to show you what I mean. And I want you to pay attention to the lip sync. Loyal servant to the true emperor, Marcus Aurelius. Father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance. As you can see, the lip sync isn't very accurate, and I tried various things, fixing the frame rates, upscaling the video to better quality. I have a feeling this is just something in the back end that we need to tweak. How I got around this was I did lip syncing. I'm not going to go through the whole process because I've done several videos on using lip sync. But basically, if you come back to the side menu here and select lip sync, since you have a reference video, you can go ahead and select cling because you can do video to lip sync. And then you can import it into this section here, but you'll have to export the audio separately and bring it in. Like I said, this is just a temporary workaround. Ideally, you won't have to do this once we've optimized the model. Another limitation and similar to Act 2 is that when you have objects within the footage, sometimes things get a little weird. If you look at the basketball here, there are parts where it kind of looks warped. The lines of the basketball are off. But generally, the motion looks pretty good. When things leave the frame and come back in, it has to generate it again, so it may not do an accurate job. But if we look at this example where the motion's not too rigorous and the basketball is in frame for the most part, it looks somewhat acceptable. Like if you really nitpick, you'll see some errors here and there. But in this case, it does a pretty decent job. Now, I also did a similar test as I did previously with Act 2, where it does pick up the bouquet of the camera. And you see here, I'm tossing the glass sphere between my hands, but the object doesn't leave my hand in this example. We saw the same thing previously with Act 2. And in terms of multiple subjects, you could kind of get away with it sometimes, but you see here where her hand and arm looks kind of weird. But there are parts that are somewhat acceptable. And even when he brings the phone to his ear, it does look pretty decent. So I wouldn't say it's perfect, but depending on the footage you're using, you might be able to get away with two characters. I don't know, three and four is kind of pushing it. Again, this model really isn't optimized for multiple characters just yet. And one more thing you're going to see here. I actually uploaded my own footage of this scene from The Matrix where I was mimicking Neo's movement here. And I want you to look at the hands. There's sort of like this ghosting happening or as if it's missing frames or something just doesn't look right. I don't know if that has to do with faster motion or maybe it's just settings that we need to tweak, but you will find this to happen from time to time. And here I actually use the footage from the movie, which was a screen recording. And I just realized I turned the wrong side on the previous example. But anyway, you can see that weird warping ghosting effect with his hand. And it's even more severe with a screen recording. But I was able to recreate this scene, which I thought was really cool. Instead of Neo, it's me. I think I look pretty cool as uh, Neo. <laughs> just call me Uncle Neo. Once again, I encourage you to check out the previous video I did on Runway Act 2 as the same concepts apply. But having 1080p full body motion and when we get face swapping optimized, this model is going to be super powerful for your character development, your cinematic movie scenes or whatever you want to create. There's so much we can do now with all these different AI video models. So there's so much more coming to open art. And once again, if you haven't already, hit that like button, subscribe. And as always, my friends, happy creating.